Good morning, Professor Spooner. How are you? Good morning, Frank. I'm fine, thanks. Uh, getting ready, getting used to the idea of a new year and wondering what we should talk about. But the thing that's on my mind most is the way uh, the organization of, of society in general is uh, changing under globalization, not only uh, because we currently don't have a government and maybe uh, and people are talking about failed nation states, mm -hmm. but that the, um, the, uh, what the, the main thing that led to the formation of what we now call nation states after the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648 was in fact religion. And uh, um, even though we don't think of religion as being the basis of um, uh, global organization now, um, in fact, nationalism has never been such a universal um, form of organization as religion has. And uh, the, the religion has a very interesting history because it, it, it's, it's a sort of extension of culture that goes back to the beginnings of uh, a long way into prehistory before we have any historical documentation. People started um, agreeing with each other about uh, where they came from and what happens when they die and what supernatural forces might be involved and so on. And this gradually led to religion and probably Judaism is uh, the, the uh, direct descendant of, of <coughs> the earliest forms of, of religion after the beginnings of um, urban life in the, uh, what, the 7th and 6th millennia BCE. But um, it, uh, and then of course, when re um, religious um, teachings began to be written down, uh, not much more than 2000 years ago, in the last few centuries of uh, what we now call BCE, um, it, 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 the Christianity became the way to belong to the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it had a much, big, much uh, more significant meaning even than citizenship which had been very important before that. Um, so um, uh, the, the big question now is what's happening in the 21st century and in fact since the middle of the, of the 20th century when people have uh, been uh, becoming less religious. Uh, in the society I grew up in in England the people uh, who didn't go to church on your street were the odd people and the normal, normal people were the people who did go to church. And now it's the other way around. Um, and uh, the, the function of um, church congregations was that they were the, the basic social hubs of society. They were pe where people met. Mm -hmm. and it's true that in England we had pubs as well, which were extremely important. And sometimes in conflict with churches, people went to the pub instead of the church. Um, but I understand that now uh, pubs are not um, uh, being so uh, not functioning in such an important way in England as they used to. And of course, America doesn't have them and bars in America certainly don't have the same function as pubs. So um, I've been looking for some time now in Philadelphia for uh, um, social um, processes which might be taking the place of church congregations. Mm -hmm. And I haven't found anything. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see um, what actually happens. Well, let me go back to a little bit and say something else that I uh, meant to say earlier, which is that the first thing that um, uh, any religion does is uh, to organize society in terms of the process of change from one generation to the next, how you get married and who you marry and what the meaning of marriage is and uh, how you bring up your children and so on. And that's been extremely important in Christianity and in Islam. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in the last uh, 50 years or so, people have been paying less attention to marriage and uh, large numbers of, I don't know what the proportion is, but large numbers of people uh, cohabit uh, without bothering to get married. Uh, 
I have relatives like that, uh, the, not my generation, the, the following generation. Um, and um, uh, so marriage is beginning to have a completely different meaning. And um, uh, it's not clear just exactly in the long run what difference that's going to make to society, but certainly the way people think about long term um, cohabitation and uh, uh, bringing up families is very different now from what it used to be. Um, and part of the reason that it's worked this way is that um, Christianity, and it happened in Christianity, of course, before any, before anywhere else, or what used to be Christian civilization. Uh, it is happening in Islam. I get uh, emails from students in in uh, universities in uh, Iran who want to come and study here. Uh, and they talk about various things about the, that are going on there now. And and uh, in it's, it's because Iran is a very urban society. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, the same sorts of things are happening in urban life there as here. And many people don't bother to get married there either anymore, even though it, that's contrary to Islamic law. And Islamic law is very important in Islam. Um, but uh, I think it's Islamic law that um, continues to serve as the basis of of Islamic of society in Islamic countries and contributes to the continuing strength of Islam as a religious force. Um, and Christianity, of course, has nothing like that. If you it, uh, the, um, uh, you, you love your neighbor as yourself, but um, it's not quite so easy to tell what love means in that sense anyway. And um, we've never thought all that seriously about it anyway. Right. You know, the, the, these are everything, everything you're saying is accurate and true, in my opinion. But I, I think that I think what you've said in the past and what I certainly would agree with is that the the cultural uh, outflow uh, over the, the centuries from religion have really in, in fact created a uh, a type of uh, segmentation and uh, tightly institutionalized kind of control um, that people today still largely adhere to even though they may cohabitate rather than get married even though they may marry people from other religions when push comes to shove and you get right down to it, I think most people would tend to identify themselves first by their religion and then by their by their citizenship. And I think that's still quite telling, uh, given how diminished the role of religion has become in our society today. It's almost as if it's uh, it's evolutionarily hardwired into our DNA from way back when. Yes, well, certainly nationality is still very important, especially because uh, in order to travel, you have to have a passport. Yes. Um, uh, you can't, so you, you, you can't give up your nationality. Otherwise, you, if you do, you can't travel. Um, but I think religion is becoming less important. And the reason that I find this so interesting is that, to, to my mind, the most uh, interesting thing about globalization is the way it's um, changing the basis of all forms of social organization mm -hmm. simply because it brings more and more people into contact with each other and they need to understand just exactly what their relationship is and um, uh, all the old forms of relationship we had based on organization as it used to be uh, and the Victor the, what we still call the Victorian period was a, an extremely important, um, uh, what shall I say, early modern form of these things, uh, which for people my age still, <laughs> we still remember. Um, but uh, obviously, if we are really are going to move into a period in which we all belong to a global community, we had absolutely no idea how to um, understand the organization of a community of 10 billion people. This is true. But the Catholic Church, for example, has had uh, 2000 years of experience in organizing across borders. They they have uh, a pretty well trodden path as to how to exercise influence uh, across boundaries, across different nationalities. 
I mean, I, I would think of all the institutions that are still remaining, um, the church and other religions, whether they be Islam or Judaism or certain Protestant uh, sects, uh, have, have a means and a method to exercise this kind of, of control. You're right. The, the Catholic Church is the only form of supranational organization that exists in the world. Uh, Islam doesn't have anything comparable except Islamic law, which for which that one of the big um, organizational problems in Islam, which has been recognized from the beginning, is that they have no um, models, no s structures that, that can ensure the application of the law. Mm -hmm. um, which is one of the reasons why they, uh, we've begun to have Islamic states. Right, in, with in the, the Sharia court, yeah. right. Um, so, um, uh, it's, it, the, um, so, so um, to, does, does the fraying and eroding of, of religious norms, um, in, in the face of, uh, more people relating to each other as globalization intensifies this and, and the Catholic church has started to run into difficulties oh, for yes, the, oh, not yes, the first time yes, in history, yes. mm -hmm. but in a very different way than before. Mm -hmm. I actually um, uh, went to midnight mass at the architecturally interesting church at the end of my street um, uh, on um, Christmas Eve just to see what, what it was like there now. And I was interested to see that at the carol service that began at 11 p.m., there were only about 50 people there. Uh, but that, I think, was because they'd lost the old organist who was so great. Uh -huh. Uh, and then when the mass actually began at, uh, at uh, midnight, I reckoned, though I couldn't count them all individually, I reckoned there were probably 500 people there. Wow, wow. Uh, now, uh, just exactly um, what's maintaining that, I don't know. And I should try going on an ordinary Sunday and see how many people are there. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it may be something about Christmas, although they weren't giving anything away. Uh, uh, the church asking you for money, not the, right, right. The, giving you. But um, apart from the uh, what what has uh, turned out to be the the the, the sacramental um, uh, use of um, sexual abuse in the church in the last <laughs> mm. uh, well, it's just suddenly been discovered, but apparently right. it's been going on for a very long time. Yes. Um, which is uh, having, uh, which, which the Pope has been recognizing as a serious problem in the credibility of the church. Um, it seems to me that the church generally is uh, um, having problems in, in maintaining its position as a supranational form of organization. Oh, without doubt. I mean, it too is eroding as as are all big institutions and organizations. It's it's not going to maintain its position. And uh, if we had this discussion 20 years from now, we we would really be able to notice the, the decline. There's no doubt about that. And then it leads to the inevitable point that we always reach is what's going to take the place of these institutions. How so we're, we're, not, we're wondering, um, on the one hand, how a global community of 10 billion people is going to be organized in the sense of how people are going to recognize each other, uh, relate to each other. Uh, is it going to continue to be family relationships, occupational relationships, uh, religious relationships, uh, ac academics, um, wealth, and that sort of thing? Or will something else develop? And um, will anything take the place of religion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, because uh, the every culture generally in in over the last what eight thousand years that we have reconstructed uh, on the basis of what we know from recent history um, has always had a religious extension to it. Yes, um, which has provided a basis for belonging to a community on a larger scale, and um, uh, it's possible that belonging to a community of 10 billion people will be a much more flexible sort of uh, condition and not require that sort of thing. But I think that people uh, will still continue to think in terms of the relationships that they know best. 
uh, but uh, nevertheless ready to meet new people all the time. And that there will still be some sort of um, search for an understanding of our relationship to the Big Bang mm -hmm. and uh, to uh, the time when the sun will um, uh, envelop us all in what, uh, another nine million years or something like that? Yes, fortunately not, not for a little while longer anyway, yes. Um, <laughs> I commend you on going out on Christmas Eve at midnight. <laughs> no. Huh. Well, Professor so, Thorpe, thank you very much. We'll uh, we'll look forward to our next discussion, and uh, hopefully, it will be before the sun envelops the earth. Yes. <laughs> All right. Have a have a good day. Thank you. All right. Thank you.